In this section, we show that properties of the unit and co-unit correspond to properties of the co-adjoint and adjoint functors, respectively. So if we have an adjoint situation, Fg, with unit eta and co-unit epsilon, we will see certain properties of eta can be translated to certain properties of F, and likewise, certain properties of epsilon can be translated to properties of G. The properties of epsilon and eta we will consider are their properties as morphisms in the functor category. So please recall the following definitions of morphisms. We have monomorphisms, epimorphisms, split monomorphisms, and split epimorphisms. The main result of this section will be an easy consequence of the following lemma. Let f, a to a prime, be an e-morphism for an arbitrary category e. Then one, f is a monomorphism if and only if the natural transformation of post-composition by f is injective. Two, f is a split epimorphism if and only if the post-composition by f is surjective. And we have the dual statements. One prime, f is an epimorphism if and only if the natural transformation of pre-composition by f is injective. And two prime, f is split monomorphism if and only if pre-composition by f is surjective. And by injective and surjective of the natural transformation, we mean that at each component, the set morphism is injective, surjective. The proofs are straightforward. For one, we have f is a monomorphism if and only if, by definition, for each compatible e-morphisms, g and g prime, if fg is equal to fh, then g is equal to h. And this is true if and only if, for compatible g and h, the post-composition map at components of the domain of g, which is equal to the, the domain of h, have equal values at g and h which implies g is equal to h. But this is the definition of the post-composition by f, natural transformation being injective since g and h were arbitrary. For two, we have f is a split epimorphism if and only if by definition there exists a section s such that fs is equal to the identity on a prime. And this is true if and only if for each compatible h, fsh is equal to fsh, which is equal to h which by definition means post-composition by f is surjective. For the converse, we have post-composition is surjective implies that the identity of a prime is in the image of the post-composition natural transformation at the component a prime. In other words, there exists a section s such that fs is equal to the identity on a prime, which is a definition of a split epimorphism. The proofs for one prime and two prime are dual, and so we are done with this proof. Now let's return to the joint situation Fg. If we take B objects B and B prime, the functor F induces a natural set map F B B prime between HOM sets. We can then take our isomorphism induced by the adjoint situation to obtain this commuting triangle. By the definitions of the maps, we have the B morphism F being taken to the B morphism G F F A to B. But by naturality of eta, this is equal to A to B prime F. So the composition becomes equal to the post-composition by eta B prime, natural transformation, at component B. Similarly, G induces a natural set map between HOM sets for each pair of A objects, A and A prime. We have our isomorphism induced by the joint situation coming down, which composes to give us a set map which takes the A morphism G to epsilon A prime F G G. But by naturality of epsilon, this becomes equal to G epsilon A. So this diagonal map is the pre-composition by epsilon A natural transformation at component A prime. Then note that F is faithful if and only if F B B prime is injective, and F is full if and only if F B B prime is surjective for all for each B and B prime. And this is just by definition of faithful and full. Similarly, G is faithful if and only if G A A prime is injective, and G is full if and only if G A A prime is surjective for each A and A prime. Then with these observations, the following result becomes trivial. One, eta is a monomorphism if and only if F is faithful. Two, eta is a split epimorphism if and only if F is full. One prime, epsilon is an epimorphism if and only if G is faithful and two prime. Epsilon is a split monomorphism if and only if G is full. To prove one, we have that F is faithful if and only if for each pair of B objects, B, B prime, F, B, B prime is injective if and only if for each component B prime of eta and for each component B of the post-composition by 
eta b prime natural transformation, the diagonal morphism is injective. And then by one above, this is equivalent to, for each component b prime, eta b prime is a monomorphism. And this means that eta is a monomorphism. And two is similar. We have f is full if and only if for each b b prime, f b b prime is surjective if and only if for each component b prime of eta and for each component b of the post-composition by eta b prime of the natural transformation, the diagonal morphism is surjective. And by two in the lemma above, this is equivalent to for each component b prime, eta b prime is a split epimorphism, which means that eta is a split epimorphism. And one prime and two prime are similar and uses the results in the lemma of one prime and two prime above. And this completes the proof. Then as a corollary, we have one, eta is an isomorphism if and only if f is full and faithful, and one prime, epsilon is an isomorphism if and only if g is full and faithful. This follows from an isomorphism being equivalent to a morphism which is both a monomorphism and a split epimorphism, and an isomorphism also being equivalent to a morphism which is both an epimorphism and a split monomorphism. For the next result, we need to recall the following definitions and results. We have one, f is an extremal monomorphism if and only if f is mono, and for each factorization of f with h an epimorphism, then h is an isomorphism. And two, a functor f is conservative if and only if for each b morphism f, ff is an isomorphism implies f is an isomorphism. Three, faithful functors reflect epimorphisms. So if fp is an epimorphism and f is faithful, then p is an epimorphism. And four, functors which preserve limits, respectively co-limits, preserve monomorphisms, respectively epimorphisms. We can now show the following result holds. Let fg be in a joint situation, then one, eta is an extremal monomorphism if and only if f is faithful and conservative, and one prime. Epsilon is an extremal epimorphism if and only if g is faithful and conservative, where extremal epimorphism is the dual definition to extremal monomorphism. So for the proof of one, we already showed that eta is a monomorphism if and only if f is faithful. For the forward direction, we assume eta is an extremal monomorphism and let f be a b-morphism such that ff is an isomorphism. By three above, since ff is an epimorphism, f is an epimorphism since f is faithful. But gff is an isomorphism since functors preserve isomorphisms. So gff eta b is equal to eta b prime f by naturality of eta is also an extremal monomorphism. So we have the factorization of a to b f with f an epimorphism, and so by the definition of an extremal monomorphism, f is an isomorphism, which is what we wanted to show. Therefore, f is conservative. Conversely, we assume f is conservative. Then given a factorization of a to b with p an epimorphism, we want to show p is an isomorphism. Since f is co-adjoint, it preserves co-limits, and so by four above, fp is an epimorphism. But epsilon fb fi fp is equal to epsilon fb f a to b, since ip is equal to a to b, and this is equal to the identity on fb by the triangle identity of the adjoint situation. So fp is also a split monomorphism. Thus, fp is an isomorphism but f is assumed to be conservative, and therefore p is an isomorphism, and therefore eta is an extremal monomorphism by the definition. Since one prime is just the dual proof, we are done, and that completes this section.